Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing another leak code problem and it's gonna be revolving around link lists. So if we wanna go ahead and take a look at the prompt here, we see that we are doing the problem reverse link lists. Now, this is a leak code easy, um, but this is like a classic problem. So I really wanted to cover it. Um, and it just simply says reverse a singly link list. Example, you have one, two, three, four, five, and it reverses the list. So the follow-up here is a linked list can be reversed either iteratively or recursively. Could you implement both? So in this video, we're going to be just be doing it iteratively, but I think it would be a really cool exercise to do it recursively, and I will probably try to do that as well on my own. So let's go ahead and diagram this out and see how we can solve it. All right, so say we're given a linked list here with four nodes. We have our head that points to a one, that points to a two, to a three, to a four, and then finally a null. The first thing we want to do is have two additional pointers here. So we can set a P here and we can set a Q. What we first want to do is set the ones pointer to null because this is going to be the new end of our list. So if we go ahead and get rid of this pointer here, we'll have this now pointing to null. Now what we want to keep doing is first setting whatever two is pointing to equal to the previous node which is what head is currently pointing to. And then we want to just shift our pointers all over by one. And we want to keep doing this until our Q pointer hits null. So let's go ahead and change what two is pointing to. We'll now set that equal to one. And then we'll go ahead and move our pointers. Again, we want to take whatever P is pointing to and point it to what head is currently pointing to. And we want to go ahead and move our pointers again. All right, so at this point, we said we're going to continue till our Q is equal to null, which it is. So now we need to do one more cleanup step, is we need to take whatever P is pointing to, and we need to set it equal to head. All right, so at this point, we've successfully reversed our list. We now have four pointing to three, pointing to two, pointing to one, pointing to null. So what are the time and space complexities of this algorithm? Well, what we're doing is we're having these pointers and we're iterating through the list one time. So we know that the time is going to be big O of N. For the space complexity, we aren't using any additional space. We're just moving pointers around. So for that reason, the space is going to be constant. All right, so now that we have a general algorithm, let's go ahead and see what the code looks like. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to check whether head is already equal to null or if there's only one item in our list. Because if there's only one item, then it's already reversed and we can just go ahead and return it. All right, now what we need to do is we need to create those two pointers, P and Q. So P is going to be pointing to whatever is head.next. And Q is going to be pointing to whatever is after P. So it's going to be P.next. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set whatever head is pointing to equal to null, because that's going to be the new end of our list. Now we're going to go ahead and loop while Q does not equal null. And at this point, there are two things that we need to do. One, we need to set whatever P is pointing to equal to whatever is behind it. So whatever head is currently pointing to. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to move all of our pointers forward one. So P dot next is going to be equal to head. And then we're going to move head equal to P. We're going to set P equal to Q, and then we're going to set Q equal to Q dot next. Finally, when we break out of this loop, we still need to set whatever P is pointing to equal to head. Finally, P will now be pointing to the new 
start of the list. So we can just go ahead and return P. Let's go ahead and run that. And we see that the output looks good here. Let's go ahead and submit it. And we see that we get a success. So we have here a runtime of 100% and a memory usage of almost 99%. So it's gonna be, a, this is the optimal algorithm here. And with that, I'd say we're done here. Um, there was that follow-up question of whether you could do it recursively or not. I think that would be a super interesting problem to do. Uh, I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but I highly recommend you guys try that. And other than that, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.